Hey, and welcome back to Supercar Street Racing for another episode. And today, we are taking a look at my finished 72 volt lithium ion AC golf cart conversion. Everything is completely finished, so today, we're gonna show you this on Supercar Street Racing. Hey, and thank you so much for coming back and joining me again on Supercar Street Racing. My name is Brad, and my channel is all about doing things around this house, working on cars, motorcycles, golf carts, anything related to power sports, we're all about it at Supercar Street Racing. And today, we're taking a look at the Lithium Ion Club Car Precedent 72 volt and AC motor conversion. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go take a look right out in the garage, have a look directly at the golf cart and see everything that was done to the cart. When we're done with that, we're gonna come right back in here and we're gonna break down all the costs on what it took to build this golf cart. And then you can decide, was it worth it or not? And you can let me know down in the comments section. But please like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. Now let's get out into the garage. We are out here in the Supercar Street Racing amazing garage. And right in front of me, we have the 2014 Club Car Precedent. Looking oh so Darth Vader-y and good. And we're gonna show you today exactly what is done to the body of the golf cart first. So the first thing that I did to the golf cart and not in any particular order, was start the process of blacking out the cart. Now I have had mixed results with that and we'll discuss that in everything that I like and hate about my golf cart conversion project. But for now, the things that you need to know are that this cart was white and we have since made this thing a matte black using a combination of plastidip and flat black paint. Now there are some slight issues with it, for instance by the seat. This gets rubbed off and there's no way to keep it good. I'm looking for a way to do that without repainting the whole cart or constantly touching up that part because when you raise the seat up, it wants to go and scrape off the plastic dip. So that is not ideal. The rest of the body is not too hard to touch up, but that part is difficult to keep looking good. We also see here on the body that we have blacked out tail lights using plastic dip. So a light dusting of plastic dip over the tail lights will then look very good. And that's what we did here to the rear of the golf cart. You can see might be a bit dark in here. This one's probably better, but there is the blacked out tail light. We also took the time to plastic dip all the plastics on the golf cart to black. And you can see that these plastics here are all covered with plastic dip. However, I have issues where the back is peeling a little bit and I have touched it up several times, but it's not ideal right there. The cart does have kind of a industrial rat rod type look to it, which I do enjoy that part. We did not have to do anything else to the body except to the roof. The cart came with a white roof. We did source a brand new black roof and remove the white roof in place of this black roof. Moving forward, there are a couple of other things actually related to the appearance of the cart. We also did the carbon fiber seat rails, which that one over there is wanting to come off, so I have to figure out a way to secure it a little bit better. But those are the carbon fiber seat rails for the cart. They press right on over the old seat rails. And the next item, is the carbon fiber look-alike steering wheel. It of course is not real carbon fiber. I could not find one that was real. But that is the carbon fiber look-alike steering wheel for the club car precedent. 
And moving forward to the next mod for the exterior. There are more than I originally thought. We have the carbon fiber dashboard looking all so amazing. This was probably one of the more expensive parts. The dashboard is one part and the ring that goes on the top of the dashboard there is a completely different part. So there is the dashboard and the dashboard has cup holders up there. It has a pocket down here, which we have now put our eco battery charging monitor on there. And it has places for six and a half inch speakers. And the trim ring on top is separate and it rounds out the look of the carbon fiber dash for the club car precedent. Moving downwards, we have the Extreme Mat in black with a silver stripe. These guys are laser cut and this one fit perfectly. Very easy to install. You literally just take your old mat out. It fits right around your pedals right here. And you can see it fits perfectly up against the factory plastics there. So that is the Extreme Mat. And that is going to wrap up mostly everything else is related to st stereo equipment as far as external modifications go because the seat was already on the cart, this nice looking seat. And it says that it is a Challenger HD seat. So that will wrap up the external modifications to, ah, wait, I did forget something. The wheels and tires, yes, we have these beautiful SS wheels and these 205 3014 tires wrapping these beautiful kind of a matte black satin black wheel and i do love them because they don't have the two-piece bolts it took me a while to find these but this is exactly the look i was going for and the car will have something similar on it as well but i did notice a few little scrapes where i definitely didn't hit any curbs so yeah, so the wheels and tires, that was about a $350 addition. And there they are looking so beautiful. And that will actually round out everything that I have done to the external of the cart. Guys, let's take a look at the audio system installed in the cart, because by far this was the biggest mod done to the cart. And we will start up front where we have these JBL speakers looking so fresh right there. These are the two-way six and a half speakers and i do have the boxes somewhere i will put down in the description exactly what these were but we have one six and a half there and one six and a half chilling right there and then if we move to the back of the cart we have a six and a half there and a six and a half there the reason they are so close together is because the original holes were already there and we did not want to get New plastics for the back. So the JBL GTOs are sitting so nicely right there. And somewhere we have the boxes for them. This is them right here. The Stadium GTO 620 by JBL is what is currently installed in the golf cart. And moving to the center of the dash, we see this lovely Samsung tablet. Now this tablet is a, um, I think it's an A7 Lite is what it's called. We are using that for Bluetooth and if you see right here, right now, we are able to use the Navitas dashboard, although it wants to be in a different orientation when it comes up usually. But this allows us to connect directly to the controller right there. and it is loading ever so graciously there. And there is the connected Navitas AC controller. This also allows us to do a speedometer with GPS, and I use Ulysses Speedometer Pro for this. And as you can see here, right here, and right now, this has the GPS in it, and it thinks that we're doing 0.3, but it is confused. And so this is what we can do with the tablet. And also, 
If we go out to the top here, go back into Chrome, we see that this allows us to play music. Let's see if we can get something to play. And there's the volume control. This is, of course, royalty-free music. And we are playing directly off of Purple Planet here. We can use, of course, YouTube or anything audio-wise. And that is feeding Bluetooth back to the rear, which we will show you here momentarily. Let's turn this music off now. And now moving down the front of the cart, we see a USB charger there that actually is hooked directly up to 72 volts. And it is showing 7.3, but I think that means 73 volts. It is not designed for 72 volts, therefore it does not know. But it does actually work. And then right next to it, we have one that is connected to 12 volts. It is currently turned off. It has a button on it to turn it on. And then down below that, we have the eco battery display, which shows that the battery is at 98% and giving us 72.9 volts, which kind of equals 73 right there. And that is a look at the dashboard for the cart for the audio system. And now let's move towards the rear where all of the fun is happening. All right, guys, welcome back. And now we are taking a look at what is in the rear of the golf cart. This is the business end of the golf cart. Most of the audio equipment is sitting right back here. And so we have a light to kind of assist us. And the first thing we see on this side is a inverter. Now this inverter takes the standard uh, 12 volts from the voltage reducer and puts that down to um, actually increases the voltage to 110 for regular standard outlets and also has a USB outlet as well. So that is the nice voltage inverter right there, which needs to be cleaned off. It's kind of dirty. Moving next to that and on the top, we can see the power amplifier there and that is a five channel amp and it provides channels to all four power to all four channels for the audio system and then also the subwoofer and then moving over next to that we have the epicenter ep 1600x it is a blau pumped copy of the epicenter and that allows bass control and also enhanced low frequency synthesis of bass the control for that is actually right there. And I had a custom plate made that says minimum, maximum epicenter level. And I moved the control and the LED up to the top right there that you can see. Next to that, we do have another charger hooked up to 12 volts and it is supposed to be a quick charger, but it does not quick charge. I found out pretty quickly. Now moving over to the rest of the audio system on the back seat we do have our bluetooth adapter and it is a okay you can see it right there Esenkin. it's on the side right there and that is what actually provides audio from the tablet or a phone if you have a phone and then it is split out of there and fed to the amplifiers in the epicenter just a standard bluetooth adapter receiver and moving towards this side, we have an inline fuse for the 12 volt system. It's a relay fuse, so you don't have to ever replace a fuse if something goes out. And then right below that, we have our voltage reducer. Now this takes the golf cart high voltage and reduces it down to 12 volts to run all the systems on the golf cart. Now it doesn't say it would work with 72 volts, but it is working just fine. As you can clearly see, the amp came on, everything else comes on. And under there, you can see the wiring for the voltage reducer and how I did that. That then runs under the seat for a, to a fuse block there where it is distributed throughout the cart. Now, yes, everything is mounted nice and clean to the back seat and is out of view right here. It was a great idea that we came up with for doing the audio system and it is nice and clean 
And now we will show you what happens underneath the seat of the golf cart. We are back now with a little information about what's under the seat of the golf cart, where all the fun stuff is. The seat will not stay up, unfortunately, by itself, which is one gripe that everyone has about this cart, the way it was designed. But here is the beautiful Eco battery in all its glory. This is a 70.4 volt, I always call it 72 volt. It is 70.4 lithium ion, 105 amp hour battery. And it is all self-contained there and we were able to remove those heavy, heavy, heavy lead acid batteries and also they spit acid all over the place. So now we have this beautiful Eco battery in its place and we do have some more stuff to show you here. I'm trying to get the light to balance. And also down here with the Eco battery, you can see the connections that go over to the solenoid and the controller. But right next to the Eco battery here is the onboard charger. Once you do a 72 volt conversion, you no longer need a charger sitting out here on your shelf or in your garage. Your charging port converts over to a standard 110 volt connector and you plug a female, such as this, into your charge port and that is how you charge Eco battery with this built in charger. Up front here, we've got a nice, let me get the light on that. We've got a fuse block right there. Now that fuse block distributes 12 volt power to anything in the cart that needs 12 volts. And I am going to put another one over there as well. So that is just a 12 volt distribution block. And then on this side, that is the master switch for everything 12 volt related in the golf cart. So when you get out and go in somewhere, you can turn off the master switch and no one can use the audio system or do anything like that with the golf cart. And the key prevents them from using the golf cart itself. All we want to do in the, in the bay here, in the seat bay, after this is get some more of the green and black sheathing and tie up all of our red wires nice with the green and black stuff. And that wraps up the under the seat for the golf cart. Now the subwoofer is sitting right back here nicely. It is a SCAR audio sub. And you can see here with the enclosure that it is facing forward. And I created a quick disconnect using standard 110 volt plugs here, which I will show you here momentarily. This is the quick disconnect. So that allows you to quickly remove the enclosure and you cannot possibly get the polarity wrong when you go back and install your subwoofer. Now, I don't think I can get you guys in there to see the sub, but it is a 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 inch SCAR audio subwoofer mounted forward firing and wired up to this amplifier in uh, mono. And so the, the same amplifier on the back of the seat does the subwoofer that does all of the other speakers. And that wraps up the subwoofer portion of this tour. Guys, that is gonna wrap up the tour of the golf cart from the Supercar Street Racing Garage. We hope you guys enjoyed the tour and now we will take it back to yours truly in the Supercar Street Racing Sunroom to talk about the cost of this whole project and tell you what that might be and whether you would want to do this yourself. So let's take it back to the Supercar Street Racing Sunroom and Brad. All right, so we just got back from the Supercar Street Racing Garage and we took a look at the 72 volt lithium ion club car precedent conversion and everything involved in doing that. Now we're gonna take a look at the actual costs right here. So I have broken down the costs here. Let's open this up. So first things first here, we have the golf cart itself. Now I did pay $5,400 for the golf cart just in the very beginning. And that was when golf cart prices were pretty inflated. So yes, I did pay a little bit more than I would have in the past. I actually got a decent cart in the past for about 3000, but I had to pay a premium because I wanted the golf cart when I wanted it. So I paid $5,400 for the actual golf cart. 
Now, let's talk about the wheel and tire setup. Now, I looked for a while for the wheels and tires that I thought were perfect for the golf cart, and it did take a while to find the ones I wanted. I didn't want bolts around the wheels that make it look like a two-piece wheel, when actually for the car, I did get real two-piece wheels, and you will see those when they come in. For the golf cart, I did not want that look. I ended up finding the golf cart wheels on Facebook and I think I paid around $300 for the set shipped to me and then we had to find some tires and I wanted to make sure I had 14 inch tires for it. We found some tires at a local place and I bought the set so everything all together here was $450 for the wheels and tires for the club car precedent. Moving on to the audio system, which was a big deal. It took a lot of work and a lot of parts to get done. Some of the parts I actually had, but I did have to order a lot of the parts. So first is the amplifier. It is a five channel amplifier. And I actually had that from another project. So I count that as free, even though I paid for it way back in the day. So first thing, the amp, and it was free, and it is five channels, so it runs all five channels of the audio system on the golf cart. It is not a marine style amplifier, so this cannot get wet, and I don't plan on driving the cart in the rain anyway. Moving down the list, next we have the speakers. So I'm talking about the six and a half inch two-way speakers. Now we did go source those locally from uh, uh, Daddios Car Stereo over on Atlantic Boulevard. And we did pay around $350 to get the JBL six and a half inch speakers for the front and the rear of the golf cart. You can see right here, $350 for that setup. Moving down to the Bluetooth adapter. Now we don't use anything as far as a head unit. We actually use a tablet with Bluetooth to establish a connection to the back to the amplifier. That was $25. Our subwoofer is a SCAR audio subwoofer. I wanna say I paid about $65 for it on Amazon and all that will be linked down in the description for the golf cart audio system. The enclosure for the, and we're talking about the box for the subwoofer, was around $125 and it worked out and fits perfectly down behind the golf cart and you just saw that when we were out in the Supercar Street Racing Garage. Moving down the list here, we've got the tablet, which was $100, and that is a T-Mobile connected tablet, a Samsung uh, Lite, I uh, forgot what version, I think it's a Galaxy Tab um, A7 Lite. I'll have to go check it out before we edit the final video. That was $100 on eBay, refurbished, and then of course I subscribe to internet, so I have internet connectivity anywhere I go. Moving down the list next, we've got miscellaneous wiring. That's gonna account for any kind of wiring or little adapters I had to buy, any clamps, any tools to do the wiring. And that is, I put in here another $150, but it actually could be a little bit higher due to the fact that I did have to buy some basic tools that I always wanted to get the connectors all shrink wrapped and done properly. Now, our 72 volt lithium ion and AC conversion, that was a big deal. It actually costs almost as much as the golf cart costs. You cannot get this actual setup done, I think, in a golf cart stock. So we paid about $5,300 for the lithium ion conversion, and that included the Navitas DC to AC conversion. So we have the AC motor, we have the AC motor controller, we have a solenoid, a 400 amp solenoid, and we have the Eco Battery 72 volt, 105 amp hour battery. Now, by far the most expensive thing of this whole conversion was that battery. The battery was about $3,600 just on its own, but everything together in the kit was around $5,300 shipped right to Supercar Street Racing Headquarters. Next, we got suspension bushings around $35, and Dukes of Duval and myself actually did the labor, so we saved on that. Now for the body modifications. So just plastic dip and paint, about $50 on the body. That's all I really have done. I didn't put the mat in here. That was actually another $130, so we should add that on, and that is the mat at the bottom of the floor on the golf cart. Got a new black roof to match the black body and that was $100, but I sold my white roof and that is part of the parts down here at the bottom. 
sold about $650 worth of parts on the golf cart to recoup some of the damage done by the expensive eco battery and AC lithium ion conversion bringing our total down to around 11,500, 11,600. If you gotta get very detailed, I would have to go back and pull out invoices, but I'll put links to everything down in the description. And I hope you guys really want to enjoy this lithium ion golf cart conversion for yourself. And if you have any questions, it's kind of a complicated process to get it installed. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Please buy anything from Amazon through one of our links through the description of the video. You don't have to buy the actual product. If you just click through and buy anything, I get a commission on it and it helps me do more projects on the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Your support means so much to myself and Dukes of Duval, anyone involved with supercar street racing. We do this for fun. We do not make money on it. We lose money. So we appreciate you. We appreciate you watching and we hope you like the video and we will see you next time on supercar street racing.